When it comes to innovation, golf course architecture provides the broadest of canvases. Contours, tees, bunkers and greens are all shaped according to how far the architect is prepared to go. But in this day and age of environmental and economic constraints, for many designers it's a case of evolution, not revolution. One man's work stands out in the game. A minimalist approach that focuses on working with, not against, Mother Nature. His name is Tom Doak. Every designer brings something different. Some are very good artists and can draw what they visualize on the piece of ground and then you're trying to make it like the drawing. I work more like a sculptor or like an engineer a little bit that, you know, I know how I want it to work but exactly what it looks like is a process. And you, you sort of keep chipping away at it until you get what you want. You know, when you can do that, the golf course looks like it's meant to be there. We've come to France to meet the American as he surveys Grand saint emilion Golf Club near Bordeaux, the first course he has built in continental Europe. All our decisions about doing new courses is what's the most interesting project we, look, we can look at at any given time. Europe was always appealing to me. We just never found the right project. And I thought it was a beautiful piece of land, just the right kind of contour for it. Soils were a little more difficult. It's not the sandiest place like some of the courses I'm known for, but that was the challenge of it. The idea was to give them as much freedom as possible because they know the trade very well. They are the specialists. Uh, I knew the property very well, but uh, with Tom I found different views, different angles. He's so talented, so focused, and so involved in the project. It's quite amazing. This is the 15th, which is the longest hole on the golf course, and the green set well back. There's a natural hillside coming in from the left. And instead of putting a lot of bunkers down there, we just decided to build up a couple of berms. Golf course designers fall into two camps. The well-known player turned designer, who uses his experience, knowledge and reputation to become a name in the industry. And then there's the camp that Doak falls into. Those who work from the ground up to forge a career. After studying design and landscape architecture, a scholarship prize took him to Britain. They gave it to me to, to spend a year in the UK traveling around and studying golf course architecture. I caddied in St. Andrews for a while and then the rest of the time I just went from one town to the next and saw all the best courses in Britain and Ireland. I did that when I was 21 and 22 years old. I was very open-minded still. I didn't have a philosophy of design that I rejected other ideas. I was still bringing in new ideas. So that year wound up having a tremendous influence on the sorts of golf courses I built. Doak started out working for the legendary designer Pete Dye. He built his first course on his own at 27. Over 30 designs later, his work is amongst the best in history. Tom's secret is waiting for the right piece of land to come along. When I got in the business, there was a perception that we weren't allowed to build on really good pieces of land anymore. I made a little niche for myself, being one of the few people that was holding out for those kinds of opportunities instead of just building wherever and whenever somebody wanted a golf course. That made me a little different than everybody else, but it also made me attractive to the people that had good pieces of land to work with. When it's a blank slate, there's no way to judge how well you've done. There's always the sense that you could have done it differently. So I prefer the, the projects where you're starting with a good piece of land and, and you're using that to your advantage instead of fighting it to try to make everything more in a certain style. Tom doesn't just let his designs do the talking. He's also one of the most outspoken architects around. Golf course construction is considered so invasive because of the way other people build golf courses that it's something to be kept away from good pieces of land, which is a terrible thing. I mean, if, if people took the idea that the Scots did that golf is a recreational activity and, you know, these open lands 
are meant or are being preserved for recreational activities, I think there'd be a very different attitude toward building golf courses. With Santa Milione now open for business, time for Doak to find his next piece of land to innovate and sculpt with the lightest of touches. There's a difference between talking about it and actually doing it. And the important thing for the environment is to actually build courses that way, where that is, you know, where you do have the environment in mind in everything that you're doing. Um, and unfortunately, not all golf courses are built that way yet. For more insights into Tom and how he goes about designing eco-friendly courses, go to cnn.com slash golf.